Hi there, welcome to the show. Don't forget to turn on the notification and subscribe to our show right now. It's Azlan Iskanda on the RSS We Face Team. Hi there, welcome to the show with the usual suspects, myself, Harry Steele, uh, myself and Harry Steele, rather, for episode 33. You know what? We're like beginning to get <laughs> the same thing all together. So, uh, but you know, we've got some great news uh, uh, this week. Obviously, um, um, SRAM had their, their uh, AGM, or you can call it the AGM, I suppose, and they've uh, pointed uh, uh, some new uh, uh, office bears. Uh, one we've had on the show uh, was Sharon Wee. So, uh, glad to have her. And the other, who is now uh, the deputy president of uh, Squash Rackets Association of Malaysia, and he's uh, right here on the show with us, and fellow Sarawakian, Azlan Iskandar. Hi, Azlan. Congratulations. And Thank you. Uh, you know, you know what? You're looking already looking older, even though you've only just been in the in the office for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's that kind of show. <laughs> anyway, welcome on board the show. We're really glad to have you. Nice to see you guys. Actually, it's good to see you've lost some weight, you know. Uh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's nice to see you again. Likewise, uh, like, no lost weight, nothing. No, no, <laughs> no. Just, just, just longer hair, you know, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to leave you guys uh, to to get the um, the show on the road and uh, wishing you luck. Thanks, man. Bye. Hi, Aslan. Hi. I'm definitely not uh, Russian Malay, but anyway, <laughs> um, congrats on being named the uh, Strap Deputy President. Yeah. No, I, I, I I need to I I need to ask you this. What what motivated you to to be part of the structure. Um, well, to be to be honest, I I was just in Stram in twenty fifteen. Uh, I think I jumped into that 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 role a bit too soon. Um, but mm -hmm. um, in all fairness, um, Stram was great in, in uh, getting me back into the squash scene. Uh, I mean, not not playing, but administering. Um, I got pushed to become the president of Southeast Asian Squash, um, mm -hmm. and you know, and I've had great interaction with. Um, with SRAM, um, obviously the incoming president, Nick, and even Jara and, and a couple of people. So I, uh, to be honest, uh, it was a bit of a last minute decision. I didn't think, uh, I was only there to help out the whole situation to start with. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that uh, uh, any challenges should happen or not, but I guess the floor thought otherwise. And uh, when I saw the lineup, I felt a little bit obligated to come in and to assist. Uh, you know, I think, um, I mean, SRAM has gone a long way, don't get me wrong. Um, we've gone a long way. Obviously, I think also because of the golden generation, you know, that's where SRAM is today. And uh, sometimes you need to come in and just remind remind everyone that uh, SRAM was there because we really took care of the players. And I'm not saying they've lost that objective, but we need to, we need to, get, we need to get back there again. I mean, would you be more comfortable if Nick was still the president? No, no, I, I mean, to be honest, that's where I came in and I was, uh, I, I would only settle for deputy because even if I was asked as VP, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have enough position and enough say, you know, um, so at VP mm -hmm. level, I, uh, I would be hurt whoever president was, I, I would have, I would have a good say. Um, obviously, I'm there and the constitution says I'm there to support the president, which I will, whichever president that comes in, I don't think that's an issue. But I think the check and balance is, is very important as well. And um, obviously, you know, you can't just, I mean, it's great that Jared was part of uh, um, Squash's um, development uh, in maybe the early 70s, I think, 70s, 80s. He was, he was a national squash player then. But a lot has changed. Uh, and I think for him being in Persatuan Squash Malaysia, being the deputy president for the last couple of years, I think he's also realized that he could uh, step up to the plate as president. And you know when people challenge for the position, I think that is great because uh, people want to give back to the sport. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, speaking about the whole process, 
um, you gave a compelling speech um, that that pretty much saw a, you know the number of votes um, obtained by you. But what was the first thing that ran through your mind immediately when your name was announced as the deputy president? Um. I mean, you know, over the years, even me being out on the scene, you know, I'm still in touch yeah. with the players, you know, I'm still in touch with the juniors, the senior, the senior players, the administration, you know, MSN, mm -hmm. ISN. Um, I mean, I'm ready, I'm really ready to give back in terms of my knowledge, I'll put it that way. You know, uh, in 2015, I kind of, kind of over, I was a little bit too excited and I thought maybe I can come in and really help the funding structure for the sport, but you know, I'm more realistic now and I think that I can really come in and help uh, give back to squash in terms of my experience. Like, you know, the top 10 player going through the ranks, player mm. transition, um, junior to senior, senior to the working, it, it being, you know, being um, transitioning from uh, professional into the working scene, uh, into the corporate scene. So I think all of that made me feel like, I, you know, I mean, of course now I have three kids, you know, and, and I look at, you know, if I were to get my kids involved in squash, what would I do? And that's what I think of the next of the juniors moving forward. You know, and, and you kind of play a different role as a father, um, as opposed to before. Um, mm -hmm. So, I just I just think that uh, there needs to be someone in SRAM with a lot of playing experience, and and I think that needs that right now. So, judging by what you've just said, it was almost expected that you know to, to actually get the deputy president's post i wouldn't say it was almost expected but i think uh -huh. for me uh i didn't you know i didn't call i didn't call anyone to lobby mm -hmm. i didn't okay. ask anyone for support i okay. just put my name up and and i told and i told um i mean that was it you know to be to be honest jared called me and asked me about consider vp nick called me to mm -hmm. consider if i was dp I mm -hmm. said, look, uh, if I'm going to be heard, uh, I will push myself as deputy president, you know, and, uh, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, here I am. I didn't, I mean, yeah. did I expect to win against Chris Fu? I mean, I guess the floor decided that, like, you know, I mean, for me, okay. I'm there to give, give back. So this is what I want. Uh, you spoke about the golden um, generation. It was a formidable side. You know, we had, you know, Sharon B, Nicole, Benki. You know, and, and the rest of the crew. Now, you know this, um, that Rome was not built in a day. Yeah. And to expect, you know, that that generation to come back in the next year, two or three, in fact, it's not going to happen. Yeah. No. Uh, and But your your time with SRAM is all limited. Yeah. Uh, you know, so what are your immediate goals for the sport? Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, my, my, my role is definitely limited right now. I mean, I'm only here mm -hmm. for, I think, a year. But the, the point is, is to get the, to get the community going, realizing that you can't have short-term goals. You can't. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you need a, a, a big plan that was done before. Um, I mean, the players now are great. You know, we've got Siva, we've got a couple of great uh, boy players. We've got a couple of top top 100 players in the senior in, in the senior in the senior in the senior tour and i think that's great you know malaysia was, you know, whatever you realize we always we are in a better position now than we were in the 80s anyway you know what the golden generation paved and what we did very well and what SRAM did very well was then was they put a lot of eggs in very few baskets and i feel mm -hmm. that the funding has almost been uh, diluted out into so many players and we now need to maybe try to find a way to find more money or we really need to pick and choose our battles um, but the program is a lot more comprehensive to what we were, uh, what what SRAM was uh, in the 90s as well, you know. So I'm just here to give back a little bit of an old school flavor as well. That, you know, we need players who really want to deliver and they're not using SRAM as a platform to get an education, which is also great. You know, I'm not saying that's wrong, but, you know, we, we've, we've, got to, we've got to have a bit of a longer, longer term structure. Yeah, but you speak about structure and, and you know, um, having plans and the structure. Uh, you just pointed out one thing, um, sponsorship. Nothing really is going to happen uh, in yeah. this COVID situation. Though. You know what I mean? Until yeah, the borders yeah. open up, until the bubble travel, it's going to be tough. I mean, like, we can't get any programs. The Malaysian squash players right now, we can't travel. You know, yeah. the, the players can't travel. The tour has opened up, but Malaysia is losing out. But um, as I, 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 
this thing that the BA uh, of Malaysia, BAM, uh, Badminton Association of Malaysia, they found a uh, formula for this. Um, yeah, I, of, I mean, I, I, I mean, I already have a formula for this. You know, okay. I'm already speaking to a professional squash association to see if we can get some local tournaments going up. Just local tournaments to help our yes, collect correct. points, you know. Uh -huh. um, but again, you know, it, 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 look, I'm only here five days, six days, maybe, yeah. you know. I mean, we have our first community meeting coming up. I'm already going to push this, um, you know, to basically, we need some local events to get our players going and we need to be able to convince PSA. Um, and, and this is the beauty about this. This is about... The beauty about knowing the people in the Professional Squash Association because those are the peers that I've grown up with. And, you know, we, we caught a... I, I'm trying to moot a bubble travel tour where all the players, you know, who are on the professional ranking can kind of play in a bubble tour, right? So if the bubble travel opens up, then we can get... But for players to go to overseas and play, you know, the quarantine is 14 days. You're going to be stuck in a hotel for 14 days. You're... You don't have any training facilities. There's no point of playing any tournaments. But right. we have enough players in our own local tour where you can try to have a local circuit. So those are the few things I'm going to try to move immediately. And obviously, the various stakeholders, you know, MSN will probably be keen to looking into this because our players don't drop in the professional ranking too much. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's not anything that I haven't thought about. I'm just surprised the last committee didn't think about that. But again, this mm -hmm. is me coming back in to say that I want to do this for the players. You know, they said players are not making any money at the moment. Everyone's not making any money. Um, everyone else is not making money. I mean, of course, but I'm here for, for SRAM. Um, the players are not making any money. They're losing points as soon as the tour opens up next month. I mean, they're not being exposed, you know. So, yeah, BAM did a, a, a test match situation, but... Look, you're not you're you're still losing ranking points. You're not you're not taking back the points you're losing over the years. You know, I mean, last year you were, you know you made three hundred points, and this year you make three hundred points, you slip up in the rankings. Mm -hmm. You know, so I will already be that will be the first one of the first few agendas I'll be pushing in uh, the first committee meeting is that you know our players are gonna start struggling. You know, before the tour, before the travel bubble opens, all our players will be dropping out of the rankings. They might be in the forties, they might be in the fifties. You know, might even be out of the hundreds. You know, we want to play Siva, Siva is 30 in the world right now. And if they, if they don't start competing, they're going to be out of the top hundreds. And then obviously, you know, our stakeholders are going to ask how come their ranking has dropped. I mean, it's just a vicious cycle, right? So we need to create a platform internally now where our players can gain some points, you know. And it will be a trickle effect. Now juniors will also be part of the events. Uh, when is the meeting? Your your committee meeting? Next committee meeting? Um, it was supposed to be. It was in the next two weeks. So that's the first thing that I'll okay. be pushing. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and one one last question before we let you go, Azlan. Um, you know, SRAM has done really well over the years, but there's something not right. I what say, is I will, it? I will correct you. I wouldn't say something okay. not right. I think I think you know. Um, there are a lot of there's a big puzzle you know okay. i think stram in the 90s puzzle was this big and stram's puzzle yeah. is this big right now and there are okay. a few missing pieces and there are a few missing pieces without without a doubt you know and okay. i'm not saying I'm, not, I'm one of the missing pieces but i can help find the missing piece um i okay. think sharon is there to help find the missing piece and i think as soon as we we find the missing pieces we can get our, i wouldn't say get our act together but you're right. It's not something is wrong or right. This, I wouldn't say that, and I like to be politically correct as well. But I think mm -hmm. there are a few things missing, lah. You know, and uh, what, what are those few things that are missing? I mean, you know, we, don't, we don't have enough. We don't have a huge enough talent pool. Like we have a great development program, but when it goes through the junior to senior transition, we're really, really missing out. But saying that, this has always been SRAM since the '90s, right? You know, when I was 19. Uh, sorry, when I was 15, I was already in the top four in the men's under 19. And we didn't invest in the number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the in the rankings. We never did, you know? Mm -hmm. It was only when I retired and I created a squash tour and, and really invested in the lower ranked players and cultivated their, their talents and, and invested in them, you know? It's when we see them shine, right? And till today, they're, they're, right now, they're the top four, top five players in the country. Because you need that investment in the number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because you can't keep investing in the one, two, three, four in the country. You need to have a bigger pool. You can't. The competition.
the moment that one, two, three, four in the country gets lazy and com and 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 uh, comfortable, no one's going to push them. Yeah. You know, you need and, they need to be able to think that they're in a position that they're never going to be comfortable. You know, and the difference is, is that when I was playing, I was competing with the top few guys in the world. I, you know, I never had a local look, my Malaysian benchmark. I never had. I didn't really care who is behind me in Malaysia. I cared who is behind me in the world. And I think maybe the juniors need to, not all, not all, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but I think uh, there just needs to be a new, uh, new approach and, and not, not a new approach. It just needs to be reminded. I think the players know what they're doing, you know? Well, Azman, thank you for your time. No, I Rashi, any any other questions? Yes, actually, I, I have a couple. Um, sure. One is uh, just just going on about that. One thing that that ha that's quite prevalent in in squash is, you know, this, the the coaches never get talked about. Is it because they're doing a very good job? No, I mean, you see, that, that's my point as well. Right? Yeah, now, there we go. I, you know, I I feel this a shame. You know, Malaysia has invested in so many good players. And like my golden generation was a, a great example. We missed out personally. I think we missed out on cultivating Bengi. We should have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's out in Qatar coaching. Great, he's got a really great experience. But I think we could have done more. That's number one, right? Mm -hmm. So then now we go. Nafiz one has just retired at 25 in the world. Sram again didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. In getting him to come back and give back to the system, I, I hope if I could, I will be trying to get him back in the system because he's something that the government of Malaysia has invested in since he was 13 years old. Yeah. And it's just a shame. It's just a shame. And the excuse is there's no budget, we can't find the money, but you know, then you have the money to find for money for, for some foreign countries who never be part of the system. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying that I'm. I don't believe in getting foreign coaches. I think we still do, but we've been in a situation where we've actually cultivated world-class players and they should be given back, you know? And, and this is nothing to do with, I don't think this has anything to do with MSN. I think it's within SRAM. It's how much we want the local players to come back and give back. Mm. That's it. Mm. If SRAM wants it, we push it. Mm. It's, if this player wants X amount, we give them that amount, you know? And they're going to give back to the country. I, I can't think of any best situation that we can encourage the younger generation of players, you know? And it's, it's just a simple, you know, I was in a conversation two days ago about one Nafizwan who is X25 in the world, can't even get 10,000 ringgit a month. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. He's top 25 in the world. What is top 25 in the world? Bronze medalist Commonwealth Games, and you can't yeah. give him 10,000 ringgit a month. I mean, that's just a shame. You know, and, and again, you know, other sports can start complaining about the funding structure, but Apart from badminton and maybe a few other sports, you guys have not done well. You've not broken the world scene. You have not. You know, and then when I hear about other sports getting more money than squash, it, it gets me a little bit upset. But we're not a national sport. We've always been played the sentiment to not, we're not a national sport. Yeah, but we're a sport that delivers. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and I, I just I think, think that the coaching structure needs to give back. And Stram has done a good job getting like some local coaches into the system. But they were not the best. Mm. <laughs> They're not the best players, right? It's just because we filled the budget. And these ex-players are coming to play. You cannot. You want to fight for something, fight for the players. And that's what I'm all about, you know? And we need to really start making sure that we take care of the players because it's such a bad scene. If you are given 20 years of your life to the sport and you can't even get a coaching job after you retire, I mean, yes. it gives you a great example for the next generation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and some players in the top, you know, I mean, some players in the top uh, 100 stop playing and they want to coach the national team because they make more money coaching at 100, at 6,000 regular a month than they were playing. You know, so it's a sad situation. I think there's a lot of realignment that needs to happen. All right. Okay. Okay. I, I could actually go on. But uh, there, there is another spot that you've been t taking up uh, and that's... Uh, uh, so you're now very much an avid cyclist, and apparently yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I do. I do, I've done a couple of Ironman since I retired. I cycle. Mm. I play tennis. I do CrossFit. I mean, the, funny enough, the only sport that I've not played since I've retired is squash. <laughs> I, I saw I saw a few clips of uh, you, you know, teaching the kids how yeah, to. Of course, you know, I mean, uh, I yeah. mean, of course, there's, there's, of course, I have pride in when I, you know, when when <laughs> I try to get my kids to play squash, and of course, you know, of course, the kids being my kids, they don't want to play squash, knowing that that was what I did very well. <laughs> so, you know, I can I can only really try. Um, but, um, 
it's, 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 it's just a great process. I, I am myself trying to realign myself, my life goals because of my kids. You know, every time you have one kid, it's, it's a new alignment, a new shift in your life, you know? Yeah. And you, yeah. you, you, you tend to, you, you, you tend to prioritize them and prioritize yourself mm -hmm. less, you know, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm at that stage now where, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not in, you know, as a player, it's very easy to just prioritize myself. But now it's all about the kids and the family and the wife, making sure that everyone's happy. So I think over the years, I've been more responsible. I am a more responsible person. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I think I can give back now because I'm looking at things at a completely different dimension as opposed to maybe mm -hmm. five, six years ago where I was still, I was still in that transitioning thinking, is this about me or is this about giving back? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're a great example of having kids really does um, mature us. No, no, I think it really uh, does. I mean, you know, apart, <laughs> apart, from the, apart from all the white and gray hair, I think yeah. it, really, it, does, it, does, it does have a huge impact in your life. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm going to cover my beard. Yeah, hey, yeah. you're only on one case. Harish, 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 I know you dye your beard and your hair. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 I would, you can censor that, but... Uh, no, but no, no, we're not censoring that anymore. anymore. Russia, don't tell anyone. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm not censoring that. This is our show. There's, there's, there's no uh, national TV show, so don't worry about it. But, yeah. you know, you know what? thank you very much, because that's quite really, really insightful uh, of uh, your, your feedback and your comments from, no, from the show. No, but I think, I, think, I think people need to take constructive criticism with, mm -hmm. with uh, positivity. Yes. You know, uh, there's always a lot of negativity when there's criticism thrown across. But, yeah. you know, and that's why I said the only reason and the only way I'm going to get hurt if, if it's if I go for deputy. If I was at VP, I mean, I'm just going to get lost in the echoes and uh, the committee is going to shut me up. Mm. You know, but at deputy, I'm going to have a big, big go. I'm going to be pretty vocal. I need, obviously, the media support to come in because I need, it's not, it's not, it's about the players. You know, you don't have the players. You don't have the coaching structure. Look, you know, the government has invested so much in the sport and invested in me and my generation. And this is how I'm giving back. But I give back in this way. Some other players want to give back through coaching. Some other players, but you got to create the platforms for them. If you don't give the platforms, it's just you know, it's this. There's no one life cycle, you know. Yes. Uh, well, you know. Sorry. Uh, one, 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 one last thing before before we let you go. Um, now I'm, I'm sure you've read about this stuff about Mukhtar Dahari scoring only. You know, we don't even know whether he scored 86 goals or 85 goals or more than 90 goals. Uh, because there is no proper documentation system. Now, it's the same with all the sports in the country. Um, it's so difficult for us to get information about players. Just wondering, with your position in SRAM, um, would you actually push for some form of documentation of all yeah, the I mean, senior I, players? I, I, that, that, yeah, that, that, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's about a documentary or some sort of uh, information about the players, you know, players... Um, players' uh, achievements, and I think it's quite straightforward. I think squash has always been quite good because we were we were, we were all world ranked players, right? And everything's in mm -hmm. the world's in the world squash uh, in the world squash scene. Like most of my bio data is within PSA, you know, professional squash association. So I think it is something to go, get going because it's. Uh, I mean, it's quite good because uh, you can start defining yourself as an athlete. You know, you have legendary mm. status, you've got mm. novice and et cetera, et cetera. And then you give the next generation a bit of a, a bit of a motivation to hit some different statuses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And, and again, like, you know, Mokta Dahari being a legend, getting his old center, that's great because you got to give hope, right? You got to give hope to the next generation. But I think now it's, it's time where everything's documented. Everything's on paper. And you can't mm -hmm. give false hope. You got to give proper hope with uh, with uh, with uh, support documentation behind the scene, right? Anyway, thank you very thank much. You uh, Appreciate it. Have hopefully, a we'll see you guys uh, again. Uh, for those of you, uh, don't forget to catch us on the RSS with HD. Bye bye. Okay, he's run off. Oh, he went off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, Taba. And I'm probably busy with the kids and stuff, lah. Like. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, still, still a bit sensitive. <laughs> ah, <Ayyo. laughs> No, it's the it's the ADHD in in the kid.
I'm I'm just I'm just uh, what do you call uh, saying that thanks for doing the show. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, like, okay, no, Rajit, you take good care. Um, I'll keep you up to speed with uh, the next uh, guest mm -hmm. uh, who we have. Uh, hopefully, I can get a footballer, and uh, I'll also let you know whether we are flying or not, lah, to.